after your candidate consultation visit, you're going to have to go back and revise the ISS. So I want to give you an example. This school submitted their ISS in 2023, but NACIS usually comes out to your school about four to six weeks after you submit your candidate visit application. So in this case, this school did submit their ISS and their candidate request application for the visit in 2023. However, it was toward the end of the year. So NACAS did not come out to their school for their first candidate visit until the next year. Now, when that happens, you're going to have to go back and update your ISS after that candidate visit. So since they submitted this in 2023. NACAS came to their school in 2024 and did the visit. The ISS was fine. They had to update a few things, but everybody's going to have to update the ISS if it falls into the next year, because every year NACAS updates its ISS. So now what do you have to do? You have to go and update it. As far as the advisory meeting minutes, they're going to have to have a 2024 advisory meeting minutes. This is 2023. Current student surveys, these are 2023. They need a new updated 2024. No matter what year you're in, if it falls into the next year, when you revise the ISS, you're going to have to update. Now, the graduate exit surveys, you're going to need 2024 graduate exit surveys. Instructor surveys, you're going to need 2024 to update it. Now, we're going to move on down. If your license, instructor's license, make sure you check those because they may have expired. Make sure that they are all current. Another thing that you want to check, if you have a substitute instructor orientation checklist, make sure it's updated to the new year. Instructor meeting minutes. If you had the meetings the previous year, you need it updated for the new year, okay? Continuing education, those hours, if they are expired, you're going to need new continuing education certificates if you submit your initial accreditation application after, okay? So right here, this is 9 13 20. 23, if they submit their updated institutional self-study before 9-13-2023, they're fine because this will last one year. Employee evaluation. Notice, okay, that's 2024. They did that at the beginning. But if this employee evaluation was 2023 when it was done and it's now new year, they're going to need a new employee evaluation. School license. Make sure that your school license are all updated, okay? If you had any release uh, forms where students fill those out in 2024, if not, then leave that blank. The next thing, the enrollment agreement. I'm not gonna click on this. Well, I'll click on this, um, uh, the pre-enrollment orientation sheets and the orientation checklist. Notice these are 2023, so you're gonna have to have 2024, okay? All right, look at this, new student orientation checklist. We're gonna need updated ones. Pre-enrollment receipt, we're gonna need updated ones, all right? Now, the enrollment agreement. You're gonna need updated enrollment agreements. So I'm not gonna click on the copies of the fully executed enrollment agreements for privacy purposes, because you would be able to see the student's driver's license, social security, and all of that. And as for privacy purposes, we're not going to click on a completed one. But keep in mind and be cognizant that you must have updated enrollment agreements for the year that you're submitting the updated revised ISS. So this school submitted 2023. So now you're going to need 2024 updated enrollment agreements. So we'll skip over the fully executed ones for privacy purposes and we will go down to the leave of absence. If you had any leave of absence in the same year that you're submitting the revised ISS, make sure that you submit those. 
All right, the pre-enrollment documentation, that's the same thing as the pre-enrollment receipt, what we looked over earlier, we need updated those, and the new student orientation checklist, which we talked about earlier. Now, we're going down. If you added any programs, make sure that you have uh, sample lesson plans for any new programs. Also, example refunds. If you had any refunds for the year that you're submitting your revised ISS, make sure that you have those worksheets, all right? This school didn't have any refunds, so you would submit a blank one. As we scroll on down, evaluation of students. All right, so let's look, practical grades. We're going to need updated practical grades for the year that you're submitting the revised ISS. So if you submitted an ISS last year and now it rolls into a new year and NACAS is coming to your visit and we have to revise the ISS, we need updated practical grades for that year because NACAS, they're going to be looking at these dates. Okay, you see this date 2023 is now 2024 is we're looking at this. No matter if you're looking at this in 2026, 2025, it doesn't matter. Right now, it is 2023 as I'm doing this video. And um, when she submitted this, it was 2023. But as I speak right now, it's 2024. So make sure you have 2024 practical grades. Now, the next thing that we're going to look, the SAP, Satisfactory Academic Progress Evaluations. We need these for 2024 because we're submitting the revised ISS in 2024. And that's everything that you need. So let me recap. I wanna recap this, okay? Advisory committee meeting, current student surveys, graduate exit surveys, uh, instructor surveys, make sure your license are current, your substitute instructor orientation checklist, we need that updated. Instructor meeting minutes, make sure that's uh, current, is not over 12 months old. Make sure your continuing education certificates are not over 12 months old. Your employee evaluation, we need that current. Make sure your school license are current. Uh, release forms, make sure they are current if you had any. Also, as we look at the pre-enrollment receipt information, make sure that's current. Uh, new student orientation checklist, that needs to be current. Make sure we got current um, enrollment agreements, a leave of absence, if you had any of those, they need to be current. Okay, as we scroll on down, make sure that example refunds, if you had any refunds, make sure they're current. Practical grades, make sure those are current. And your SAP evaluations, make sure they are current. All right, so that's what you need to do. And another thing that I want to share with you as I'm doing this video, because a lot of people will do your ISS, a lot of consultants, but they, they're not going to tell you that you have to do a revised ISS after your candidate visit. So whatever team that you work with, make sure that that consultant is going to do your revised ISS. Make sure that that consultant is going to do your revised ISS and work with you on this because you also are going to have to do the updated revised checklist. Now let's go through that because a lot of times consultants will miss this. Now we're doing a revised ISS and it rolled into a new year. So guess what? We're going to have to do the cross-reference because these change every year with NACAS. The cross-reference catalog checklist. It may look like it's the same from the previous year, but it's not. A lot of school owners and consultants make a big mistake by using the same checklist. No, NACAS will reject your institutional self-study. Your enrollment agreement checklist, make sure that that's updated for the new year. All right. Your leave of absence, uh, there's a leave of absence checklist. Make sure that that's updated. All these checklists Every year, NACAS will change a few things. You will look at it and think it's the exact same thing because it looks like it, but it is not. I repeat, it is not. NACAS will change things around. Also, your SAP, that Satisfactory Academic Progress, that checklist, it needs to be updated because NACAS does a new one each year. So I wanted to make sure that you all know that. So I showed you 
all the documents that you have to update those exhibits. So if, if you're on our team, make sure that you send the updated documents to the team so they can update and revise your ISS because we want to have that done within seven business days when NACA sends you your candidate visit report. Now, also keep in mind, if you use other consultants, at least you have the information on what needs to be done. A lot of consultants will not do the revised updated checklist. They will try to sneak that same old checklist in. NACAS is going to reject your ISS. So make sure that's done. If you have any questions, feel free to text 615-496-3977. Just text NACAS, that word, or just text school, and I'll give you a call back. All right, so that's everything that needs to be done. Hopefully you all learned something uh, from that and you have a great rest of the day. So that's it for this video.